Ron Slay, VFL, SEC basketball legend on 3HL on the zone in Nashville, plus analyst with the SEC Network. Hello. What's up, good people? How are you guys doing, man? Well, the last uh, 60 to 75 minutes has been a conversation about managing the offseason that is and will forever be, it looks like. <laughs> What happens in college basketball? Tobey Awaka entering the transfer portal. That news came out a little more than an hour ago. We, we've talked a lot this season about what he's able to do, the impact Tobey can make. What do you think hearing the news? You can start with Tobey. You can talk about the roster with Tennessee, wherever you would go with hearing that news about Tobey Awaka, who announced he's entering the transfer portal. Man, that's, um, that's a tough one right there. But I also think, man, it, at times you can't overreact um i think it's 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 about to become a formality of <laughs> the off season for college basketball for college sports in general until it's um at some point maybe a cap put on or um a salary cap if you will whatever needs to be done with nil but i mean in a sense though when you're when you increase your stock it's almost like man from the player's perspective why wouldn't you test the market you know what I mean? It's like, it's like testing the waters. Instead of testing the NBA, you can, you can test the waters of college and see where else you may be wanted. So um, I, I, can, I can understand it, man. I, I hate it, though. Ooh, good gosh, man. You love Tobey as a player. Um, he, he fights tooth and nail with being undersized, still being able to be able to deliver, still being able to affect the game on both ends of the floor. And it, it feel, felt like he was coming into his own. Um, especially towards the end of this season, we expect some high expect some high expectations coming into the season, especially after what he did in the, uh, with the USA team. That was pretty good. So that's a that's a tough void to fill. Um, the positive light on it, it's a lot of Tobey Walkers out there also testing the waters. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, it's not not a knock or a slight to him, but I mean, this is. You got to do your work year round now as a coach. I, I mean, I don't know how. I don't know how they do it. It's, this would this would drive me nuts. This would drive me nuts. But um, you look at the roster now, and you, you try to figure out what's going on in the front court. You know, you got JP Estrella, Kate Phillips, they do. Um, but Tobe would would be a key a key piece to that front court and them doing well. So it's gonna be interesting to see what direction they go, man. Golly, that, that's. That's one you hate, man. That's that's one when, when you had the superheroes as a little kid, man. You always had the one, the one superhero that was the beat up everybody. He might be a little undersized, might look funny, like the the, the color may be fading on him, or one of his shoes might be off. But boy, you always know where to find him. That was Toby Walker for the front court, man. So you losing one of your superheroes on this. One. Ron, uh, I, I would like to think that you and I are friends. Um, <laughs> Swain, you got to start like that. I mean, yes, yes, my brother, we are, we definitely agree. You probably already know this, but I'm here to remind you that Ron, I know Tobe has left an opening for a post player. Ron, you you can't play, man. You can't take Tobe Walker's spot. Okay, I know, I know you want to. I know you like playing. I know you love to play in this offense, uh, but. Ron, you can't play, man. You can't take Tobey's spot, all right? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. I tell you what, boy, I, I suit up in a heartbeat. <laughs> Golly. Like you, this this is the thing, Swain. When you look at just the history of the way Barnes coaches and what the power forward means to his his systems, I, man, I it's gotta be something else. Let me just say that. Yeah. It's gotta be something. It can't be the style of play and Playing time, it's it's got to be something else. Yeah, yeah it's got to yeah. be something else. Yeah, for All sure. Right, that's, that's tough. As Just as ahead, sad man. as this could be for the Tobey Walker fans, and listen, I was I was hurt, man. I was hurt for about about five minutes, but I was yeah. okay because Balo was available. Ron Slay from Arizona, yeah. like like his opportunity to to upgrade and get better. If you are Rick Barnes, where can you get better with some of these guys hitting the portal? Man, you, it's it's plenty of places. Like you said, that, that's that's the silver lining in it all. What what you lose, you can also go and gain. And like you said, upgrade. There's different spots all over, man. This 
um, now that the, the championship is doing, there's going to be people bolting um, to jump into the transfer portal. And depending on what you need, like you, you have a, it's like going down to the grocery store with your shopping cart, man. Like whatever you're looking for, <laughs> you, you can find. You need a big that can score. You need a big that can bang. You need a seven footer to go out there and, and get it done. It, you can go find it. It's just about doing the work and also trying to keep the integrity of your program and the culture. I think that's one thing that can't get lost in trying to find a big splash or um, that's what was so great about Dalton Connect to be able to bring somebody in that could fit in into the system and into the culture more so than to play um, on the on the court. Because if you can fit them in comfortably with the rest of the guys, then you think eventually the talent will show and he can be able to carry on and, you know, have a, have a great production, um, a great productive season moving forward. But it's, it's so many, Swain, I don't know where to start. Like, it was also another seven-footer that red short for Arizona. I forgot his name. But he's also available, and he has three years remaining. So hmm. he was a five-star coming out. Um, pretty good, man. He might be, might not be seven-footer, might be 6'10", 6'11", but hmm. still size that can get it done. You know, five-star, you don't just you don't just throw five-stars out there. Four-stars, you may just get that out there. But a five-star, you had to have some kind of talent. It's, Josh, I think it's worth noting that Ron knows that. That means he's keeping up with the transfer portal because he's ready to recruit to players Tennessee too. Just yeah. go ahead. Yes, yeah, Swain doesn't just have a tab; he has a, a window dedicated to the it, transfer Ron. portal. I'm on it, Ron. He's constantly you watching. It? Yes, yeah. you have. That, that's the only way you can keep up with it, man. This thing is forever changing. It's, uh, and then you also got a couple in the guys that that are um that have goals of trying to get into the NBA, which. It's just it's a different time, man. I, I have no earthly idea where these where these these kids are getting these where are you getting your information. Like if, the the trainer that knows somebody that knows somebody that knew somebody. Like the, those are not the people you're supposed to be listening to, man. I do believe that NIL is set up for you to have an opportunity to come back and increase your stock. People that are averaging 12 points and 12 points, you score 16 in mid-major and you're thinking about going to the league, y'all can't be watching the same game I'm watching. You can't be. Now, I, how five, now I know I know some I know some guys out there, that Florida State in particular, you know, guys averaging four points and end up being a lottery pick, but those are freshmen. I'm talking about the fifth year guys, the, the guys that are flirting with going to the league. This, who oh, is a different age, man? God, I feel like the old man on the porch. Swain, bring me a drink, man. I got you, man. Uh, Ron, uh, it's it's weird because, like you you have these players that are are getting whatever they're getting right to come in from high right. school. And what's happening is established players, for whatever reason, is finding out how much these other dudes are making. Yeah. And if you are an established player and some guy that's coming in and hasn't done anything is making more than you, I'm sorry, man, that's not going to sit well. Remember a couple of years ago when um, Sam Bradford was number one overall pick and he got like $60 million guaranteed. The next year – they changed the whole CBA, and Jameis Winston was the first pick the next year, and he wasn't getting paid more than all pros and 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 Pro Bowl players. They changed it, and I just feel like yeah. it's natural to be to to say to yourself, "Man, that's that's not right. Yeah. I need to go test my value somewhere else." I think that's what's happening in football. I think it's what happened in basketball, uh, and I think it's gonna happen other sports too. It's going to continue to happen too, Swain, until it's a cap put on it, man. That's that's why I agree with saving that. Um, and that's what he was talking about. And that's funny that you talk like that once you're walking away from the game. But I, I get that I get that point from him. It's, it's it should be a show me um, of what you can do. For, not a not a predictive. Um, I'm gonna get you because you're a five star. You're expected to do this. I'm gonna give you six figures. Like it shouldn't be that. It should be. You established like Zakai Ziegler should be able to go in the office and talk to somebody and ask him what he wants. Yeah, and, well, I understand that. 
but not somebody coming in. You know, like you haven't done anything. Yeah. Um, for an, another one, another case, man, South Carolina with Michi Johnson leaving, like mm. it. That's the prime case. You had the keys to the team. You're able. You're able to shoot logo threes whenever you want to, even when you're zero for ten. You're still able to do it, but you like what you're saying like you want to be paid as the highest player this is just me hypothetically speaking you want to be paid as the highest player you're not the best player colin murray balls is the best player on that team there's no if ands or buts about it. he should be paid like it. and if you don't get it then i guess you have to move on so here comes ohio state knocking on the door and now he's transferring to ohio state it's like like what do you do like you can't please everyone, nope. you know. So um, whatever it is, man, I think. However, Dan Hurley is able to keep that <laughs> that talent up there with him at UConn. So I need to tap in to figure out just exactly what he's doing because that's some talented guys up there. Yeah, well, from last year to this year, what they did. There's the formula for you right now. At least what we've seen in a, a short sample size, but what a sample it has been with the two-year run, 12-0 and in the NCAA tournament. We'll continue uh, with Ron Slay, VFL with us on the Slay Ride, thanks to Native Design with the Native Nursery. Just for the record, Ron, I also consider us friends. I still think you could fill it up in the boom room room for a few minutes <laughs> if Tennessee called on you. I want the record to show that. What and I, and I know and believe that. That's why I don't even have to address you. Say less, Ron Slay. Jason Swain here. I'm Josh Ward. We continue on the Slay Ride with Ron Slay on Josh and Swain. <laughs> On our YouTube channel, Sports Animal YouTube channel, like and subscribe when you stop by. We have the sleigh ride every week thanks to Native Design with the Native Nursery. And we've talked about the news of Tobe Awaka entering the transfer portal. Ron, we went through kind of the big picture look at college basketball, what it is now. Tennessee will look at options, players to bring in, uh, assuming Jonas Adu comes back. And then I would also say J.P. Estrella. That's going to be a big part of the conversation, wouldn't you think, about development and what role he can play as he played sparingly through the season played 15 minutes against Purdue but Tennessee has talked often about how much they like the potential of J.P. Estrella yeah no question I think in, as fans we all got to see exactly what he can bring to the game we saw it in flashes throughout the year but in that game um in the NCAA tournament he was really really impactful his length um his athletic ability um it's it's it's, it's something else when you're able to um throw that ball up man and let a guy go grab it and finish at the rim i think you saw it last night that put Edie in a bunch of binds when they put the big fella johnson in and he was able to go out there and get that lob that prevents a totally different game you're able to get to the cup a little bit closer but you put the big man in limbo and just that that bell out of tossing the ball up and knowing somebody's gonna come down with it presents um a, a factor that you can't can't really add up until you get in the game, especially defending the rim as well. He's another guy that blocks shots um, and, and can defend the basket as well. Looks a little limble, uh, nimble, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see um, how, he, how he, he improves in this offseason. But that's somebody I would put a lot of stock into. Um, I haven't been able to see him shoot. You know what I mean? You want to you be able to see that little 15-footer just in case you're able to get a high low going. But that that should be good, even if it's not him. We do know Jonas they do has touch. Um and maybe it'll it'll bolster his confidence to be able to shoot outside if you were to go with that big man lineup, those two right there, you have Jonas at the four. Um just just gotta figure out who's gonna guard who on the other end. Ron Slay, one on four five the zone, and the SEC network. There's a big vacancy in the SEC, Ron. I know you know people that know people that know people. What do you think Kentucky's hmm. going to do? Man, that's they, whatever they're going to do, they got to get it right. Now, I will say they don't have to be, into, be in a big rush to go grab a guy because of the, the um, status of holding a Kentucky job means. But I will say I don't think it's what it used to be. As far as when you talk about the total landscape of college basketball, if this job would have came open, as soon as a guy walked away, a guy would have been filling that role, and it would have been easy to do, regardless if you were going to go pull somebody from a champion or you are going to pull somebody from a mid-major, whatever it's going to be, they were going to fly to Kentucky just because of the resources. But the way it is now, man, the landscape of college basketball has changed, especially coming out of COVID with NIL, with people being able to, 
pour into their um their programs. So me personally, I, I like I like to shoot after Billy Donovan. I think that right there, when you talk about knowing the, the landscape, being able to put a staff together, his last time being here, he was uh, a, a controller of the SEC, still has ties, and then it's, it's nothing like being able to recruit guys and walking in their living room and you knowing what it takes to get to that next level and still having connections. Young players look at that like, oh, man, he was just in the league, you know, so – that would always work. I think another guy, um, Will Wade. Uh, I, I like Will Wade for that for that spot. He's a guy that could push. We know what he does in recruiting, and it's legal now, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the only thing is how will he how will he um, respond to fans? Or I, I'm not sure how how that worked with LSU, but when he gets hot under the collar, it's his way or no way. And I can see him um, <laughs> telling telling the fans, "Man, y'all shut up, and let me coach, or whatever it may be." <laughs> So that could be interesting to see. Um, it looks like all signs are pointing to Scott Drew, though, down at Baylor. It, it actually does. And, you know, with the relationship him and the AD have, um, once you get to a situation or program and you're there more than 10 years, and sometimes it gets a little stale and maybe you need a fresh start. He's already won the national championship at Baylor. Um, they're poured into the program. They got a new arena there. Um, but – also, to scratch that competitive itch, there's nothing like going to be able to turn a blue blood uh, program back around or get over the mountaintop. So that that one national championship could mean a whole whole lot um, in his resume to be able to do it at two schools. And we we know he can recruit. That's that's and he's done it with less being in Waco than it would ever be at Lexington. So I could see any one of those three. This is our our final uh, official sleigh ride episode, but. Who knows, with, with everything we've talked about this hour, we might be bugging you next Tuesday saying, hey, you got 15 news items. you got to hop back on with us. But we'll, we'll talk to you again before next season. But we want you to know how much we appreciate you, how much we appreciate Native Design helping make it happen for you to join us every week for a full hour. Man, I appreciate you guys, man. And always got to show love to Jacob Dunaway and his family, man, always mm-hmm. coming through and holding us down. So um, the last sleigh ride, man, we're going to go in, hopefully, and be able to do a little paint job, get some things, get some new wolfers. Thanks to Swain. Put some new tens and, and some six by nines in our car. Come back, you know, looking a little bit better and, and, and sounding better. So NIL season doesn't just apply to the the active hoopers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's the plan. Thank you. Swain event. Josh and Swain and the Swain event combined. I will get rims on my sleigh ride. <laughs> Ron they, Slay, we will make it happen. They tens, but I keep them clean though. <laughs> uh, I, John Calipari. You were talking about the vacancy at Kentucky. Him leaving, that idea wouldn't surprise me. But him going to Arkansas, I didn't see that coming. But they care about basketball greatly. They're in Fayetteville. Eric Musselman went west. What do you think about this move, the impact on the SEC? We'll still see Cal in the league. Nothing's official there, but it seems like a formality of just waiting for that to happen publicly. Yeah, that was the the biggest shock to me. Not, Not him walking away, but him going, being able to go to Arkansas in conference like that in a situation where man, they are just as passionate as Big Blue Nation. It may not be as many as Big Blue Nation as they have, but Arkansas, I promise you, packs it out, and they are dying for success. They love it. They get behind it. They're going to pour into it. You already see that when when they're already announcing that they got $5 million annually to pull from for NIL. That says a statement there that we want to be great, and whatever you got to do to do it, it's going to be – um is accepted. Uh, I think Cal, man, is going to do a good job. I honestly think Arkansas um, will win more than Kentucky wins this year, regardless of whoever Kentucky goes and, get, goes and gets. Um, I think the pressure won't be as high. I do think the pressure will be on whoever steps into that Kentucky job in year one because they'll be looking over their shoulder to see what Cal is doing at Arkansas. The fans anyway, which will add more pressure. But I think the SEC is going to be – it's going to be really, really good, man. You got Texas and Oklahoma coming in as well. So you got new coaches. Um, and then how do they how do they navigate this transfer portal? That's one thing that um, Cal has not had a problem with as far as navigating recruits and transfer portal. He can go get what he wants still because of the product he's going to produce after their college career. So I expect Cal to do some good things there. It's, it should be a match made in heaven, man, honestly, because of the success needed. And that's crazy to say when you got a team coming off back-to-back elite eights and things of that nature that Musselman did. But this year was a down year, and they fought the wood as far as the fan base. 
And this, this I, I honestly, I like Arkansas. I like Arkansas, man. They always treat me well when I come up there. Even when I played, they were always going to be rowdy. But, man, you understood. They know their basketball. So I'm all, I'm all for that. All right, before you go, Ron, your opinion, your reaction, your take on Tennessee making the hire with uh, Kim Caldwell from, from Marshall. Yeah, I, uh, I love it. You know what I mean? I, I love it. I, I look at and the reason I love it is because of what Danny White has always done. He's done thorough researches. He knows what he wants. He goes and get it. And you look at his track record from Bobby Hurley to Nate Oates to Johnny Dawkins, Scott Frost, Josh Hype. Excuse me. The list goes on and on. He hasn't missed. You know, and, then, and one thing that you got to be able to inject is some excitement. He did that with Hypo. Um, regardless of what our record was going to be, we knew we were going to have some excitement and scoring and be able to high-five in the stands instead of have to sit and shake our head. I think he's, that's going to be the same thing with, um, with with her coming in as well as the coach coming in. I think she's going to do a phenomenal job as far as up-tempo, speed. She uh, led the country in scoring. Like She knows what to do. Now the, the tip of the iceberg is going to be the recruiting. Mm. How can she get the recruits in? Once she's able to do that, I, man, I'm, I got all faith in Danny White and his team for going to go get who they who they're supposed to. So I know it, it wasn't. It, listen, that wasn't a favorable hire for hype. And now look at us. Everybody, everybody all on board. I think it's going to be the same thing for the Lady Vols. Ron, what do you think Kim Caldwell needs as she takes this big jump from Marshall to Tennessee? Staff around her, yeah. recruiting, resources, all of the above. What would you say is, is necessary to help her succeed as quickly as possible? Man, I know it's always it's always hard not to bring your staff with you when you're coming from a mid major or whatever it may be. I would think, man, it got to be some kind of shake up there. Go get a go get a great staff and understand some people that are really really hungry and that have connections to the grassroots program. If you do that, you got to get one or two like that. You do that, you'll be just fine. I like her coaching style on the floor, the recruiting part of it. Go get some people that's connected, man, to Nike, um, Adidas, Under Armour, whatever it may be. You got to get some people that are connected to those grassroots programs because then you don't have to do all the recruiting. The players will recruit for you. Hmm. There's never been a better time to try to strike in the women's game after what we just saw the last couple of weeks and really all season, the last couple of years. With the the interest in the game, Tennessee Mm -hmm. is a brand that can capitalize if they put the product out there. Yeah, and if they do, guess who? Guess Danny White is going to get behind it and put some nitrogen uh, <laughs> boosters on it. <laughs> He's going to shoot it into the into the stratosphere after this one. I'm telling you, so it's, it's perfect. We will hear from Kim Caldwell to begin the next hour. So you will hear from the new Lady Vols head coach with her introductory press conference. Ron Slay, we appreciate you again. We'll talk to you again soon. But uh, we've had a great time on the Slay Ride all year. Thanks again to Native Design, Jacob Dunaway and his team with the Native Native Nursery for making it happen. Uh, Keep killing it on 3HL with Brent and Don. Tell them we said hello and thanks for all the input today and all season long. Will do, man. Y'all stay in line, man. Y'all hit me up when you need me. 